Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. Yo, what the fuck is good, y'all? It's your boy Bugs. Back with the Full Circle Podcast. Got my guy Day in here, dude. Yeah, Almost it's good, there. bro. It's good, <laughs> How you bro. doing, brother? Great to see you, man. Sticky fingers. Hell yeah, we're on the loud. Fucking on. Um, yeah, I had to had to rock the the Vic jersey that I've never fucking washed on some dirty shit yeah. since the Super Bowl. He's a 49ers fan. We're shooting this the day that they're fucking playing. Yes, sir. Big 49ers. <laughs> repping the San Fran boys. They play in like 30, 40 minutes. So that's going to that's gonna be fun. Fucking, oh, yeah. um, so what's good, man? Who are you? What do you do? So my name is Dega Bands. I go by DGB Day, whatever you really want to call me. Um, I'm a rapper. I'm an event promoter. Uh, I've been hosting this shit. You see what I'm rocking right now? Dirty Facts. East Jersey. Shout out my brother Demi God and Juice Box Studios out in Vineland. We just hosted our first show. Um, that shit was fire, dude. Yeah, I mean, that, that was my first real hosting, like, me putting everything into it. And, like, Fuck yeah, dude. Like, that, that, I mean, it I went great. I, good, I think no, I had a good turnout. Great. You fucking paid a winner and shit. You gave bread out. Like, yeah, like, it, w- it wasn't, like, some bullshit ass, like, yo, come watch some people, yeah, like, just jump on the stage. Yeah. yeah, like, someone's actually going to win some bread tonight, too. Facts. That puts stakes in it. That's what makes fucking sports betting fun, dude. Oh, so yeah. the fact that you're just going to see somebody win some shit. And it wasn't no... Inside, like hand picked winner, you know. Hell what I mean? no, you, yeah, you we gave had it judges to the legit, and everything. Yeah, you gave it to the legit winner, which was Hendo. Shout out to yeah, Hendo. Shout dude. out to my brother Hendo. Just did some fucking work with him. Shout out Tony Lit, mixed Facts. it. We had him come out out to detox. That's on Mystic Island, Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we had t- Hendo drove out from his work, so that shit was like he drove like an hour and a half. But you know, mm-hmm. you know, when I when I fuck with an artist. I'm not the type to make people pay. So I was like, yo, I got you. Yeah, we'll pay for the session. The me, and, me and Demi shall. Demi. That's how it should be, bro. That's yeah. I can't make, like I was saying, I yeah. can't do business with people that I don't consider a friend. Yeah. Even though what the side of business is, that's a different side story. Yeah. But I can't make music with someone if I don't fuck with them. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? 100%. And, I, and that's just how I am as a person. Like, even if, so, I mean, some people's music isn't like as mm-hmm. caliber as, you know, you and I's, but mm-hmm. like. I still will work with them. It's yeah. Like they're a friend. Well, that's the vibe thing. Yeah, that's yeah, it's I all mean. about the so, vibe. It's not really about. It's about making people better as a mm-hmm. person, not about as yeah, artists. Just as artists. Yeah. yeah that's exactly. the whole point. We're supposed to grow all around. Yeah, for sure. That's what the full circle shit represents. Mm-hmm. Fucking if like the thing about music is it's based off of sound. So even yeah, if even that, if the true. lyrics are trash, like if it sounds cool, people will still yeah. like it. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell to my boys, and like a lot of my people's are real lyrical. I'm like, bro, mm-hmm. lyrical isn't the wave. You anymore. gotta dumb it down. You, you don't a even have you, you don't even have to dumb it down. You just have to have a sound with the lyrical ability. If you mm-hmm. don't have a sound with the lyrical ability, yep. you're just splurting out words, and people aren't listening. They're like, oh, this yep. sounds like we in the nineties. Like we were just saying, if if Nas gets played, the dance floor gets cleared out. Like no but disrespect you to Nas. So, yeah, but yeah, one hundred percent. But, but, but the second you hear some Meg the Stallion, yeah, yeah. that one's like, oh, I'm a bad bitch. Oh, city oh, girls, man, that's yeah. what it is. That's right. fucking hilarious. But there's something to that. It's yeah, obviously no, dance. It's the sound. It's exactly. dance music, but like it's when you when people are in that mind frame of going out just trying to vibe, they're not. They don't need to psychologically analyze why the fuck we're human beings. You know what I mean? Right. They're, they're just they're trying just to like, like see a booty or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> see a booty pop. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's fucking great. Right. So yeah, it's like I have a lot of versions. I make every genre, and I make subgenres of those genres. So for me, it's very different. But as far as that goes, like I need to, I need to make every sound because every day I feel different. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't feel like rapping, rapping every day, bro. But when I do, that shit comes out. But yeah. sometimes I just want to mumble some fucking melodies and shit yeah. like that. And that's and there's, like, there's nothing wrong with that, yeah, though. And that's the vibe. You and that's know? the thing about art. It's like you can't really put a put a like a a good or bad on it because there's some music that sonically is fucking terrible like the mix, yeah. like the mix is bad or whatever yeah. and it's like got some of the most views type shit yeah but with all. the views that's weird too i don't even know how to well view I well i feel like views now. aren't really even a big thing like i feel like it should be how how you portray yourself as a person like you should mm-hmm. be going for views yeah like, that's the whole thing like if you get views that's great if yeah. you if you're building your reputation that's great but like mm-hmm. People paying for it is weird. It's a weird thing because, like, a lot of artists feel like they have to get caught up in that game. It's like, like I said, because I've, from my ciphers, I've had that happen naturally just from people sharing the link on Facebook. But now Facebook, 
fucking you'd be lucky if ten percent of your fucking friends on Facebook see your post. Yeah, and that's not even chronologically. That's, that's just, just because just of the algorithm. A, yeah, that's just because oh, people didn't like it within the first twenty minutes, then. You're fucked, pretty much. And that's not how it was. Before, it was like, when you posted at 3 p.m., I saw that shit. You know what I mean? In the order. And then if you posted a link, we would guaranteed see it. Yeah. Now, if you post a link, it's even a smaller percentage. So, it's a weird game that we're against right now. And the fake it till you make it thing, that yeah. statement, like, wow. people can buy views and look like they're lit. And, it'll e- and you'll know that they bought the shit, but you'll still feel... That weird underlying, like, yeah, because you feel like the, your, your goal you is to be number. like that, yeah, because cause, just because you see the number, though, it's a weird game, dude. So, like, as a creator, as an artist, like, you you can't survive in this shit unless you have the mindset you just said, yeah, no, to, 100%. to actually care about it, because otherwise, yeah. you're gonna be like, fuck this, yeah, you no, 100%, I mean? no, yeah, 100%, because some people, like, they're coming in, they're like, oh, well, I feel like I got this, that, and this. And if I don't get to this far by this time, mm-hmm. I'm doing something wrong and I shouldn't be doing yeah, there it. There ain't no time on this shit at exactly. all. Exactly. No, it's mm-hmm. endless. And like, I'll give you a perfect example. When I first met you, I wasn't even a rapper. Mm-hmm. Like, I was on the it's bus. It's crazy you were such a young bull, too. Yeah, I was like 16. <laughs> I'm on the bus with y'all. I'm just, you know, vibing. Mm-hmm. I came with Drip to support Drip. I did mm-hmm. not come. Like, I yeah. literally made a rap song because I would freestyle with Drip mm-hmm. and my friends. And it was just something that That's we all enjoyed I doing. I was, I was freestyling. I was just like, my first rap was like, all right, I'm going to write one and rap it at a party. Yeah. And when I yeah. rapped it at the party, people freaked out and I didn't well, have yeah, any when more I written. <laughs> well, like, I would see, like, when I grew up, I was like the trapper. Like, everybody knew uh-huh. me for, for the gas. So, like, mm-hmm. I dropped the song. I had so much buzz already as a person mm-hmm. on how my energy is as a person yeah. in general. That I got two thousand plays on like the worst song I, I ever had. Yeah. yeah, I got two thousand plays. I got on, like, a lot the of plays year. on my first one too. It was yeah, funny. I'm, I'm like, well, well, maybe I can do something. And I dropped another one. I got like a thousand. I'm like, that shit was even worse. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so well, you just keep fucking. With so it. That, well, so then I was but like, it's fun too, bro. That's the thing yeah. too. Like it's when it comes to talent. Yeah, anybody can get better at anything they do a lot. Well, that's what so like, with me. you're just gonna get, you're gonna get, keep getting better, and you're gonna get bored of this genre, and you're gonna start doing other shit. You know what I mean? That's why I, I hate when well, yeah, people. Yeah, that happened put, with me recently. Like you know, like I got Hendo on a funky dance song the other night. Yeah, I got funky dance, <laughs> bro. I got, I got some drill shit. I got some funky dance songs. I, I just got dance. I got some like, I got some like rock songs. I got. Some like EDM type shit. Like I got all different types. Dude, of that's shit. what that you need to, bro. Like that's because otherwise, like because I, I honestly, I don't listen to music. I only listen to my no, shit because no, I make I'm so the much. Sa- I'm the same. I'm exact on some way. Kanye shit. Yeah. Just sitting back, like yeah, play that one, play that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no, one hundred percent. I'm the same exact way. And people always ask me, like, yo, did you just hear so and so's album drop? I'm like, nah, nah. <laughs> I've been in the <laughs> studio. I'm on my own. I don't want to hear no influences involuntarily. Right. I'm trying to do me. Yeah, I, I want to be like nobody else. My sound, my story, dude. I think it's gonna eventually come to a point where everyone just makes their own music for their, and they they have their own soundtrack for their life. And talking about timeless shit, like classics. Like I have so much music that every fucking month I'll just open a folder I haven't opened in a while. And some of the songs that I th- I remember when I made it, they were like so good to me. But some of them songs are still really good. That's mm-hmm. what a classic is. That mm-hmm. that sonically just pierces through time, no yeah, matter 100%. what. Once you get your classics, that's when you can really start fucking really doing yeah, other no, shit. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I got dude, a couple. It's so of those. fun, dude. It's so fun. I t- I I kind of took a step back from creating a little bit, but I'm slowly getting. When I say that, I I still make like three songs a week, but I I go hard when I create. So I I have like big binges. It's the same with drinking. It's the same with eating cookies. I'll eat the right. whole box of cookies. You know, right, that's it. Hey, side <laughs> cup, a half. I'm smoking that yeah. whole bitch. <laughs> if, I, if I'm creating, I'm making like five albums in a week type right, shit. So that's right. why I have so much that I sit on. But it's fucking weird, man, because it's hard to pick. Well, it's also now. different for you. You don't mm. pay people. Yeah, I do it. I just make it. You mix. You yeah. know how to mix. You know how to master. You know how to do all that. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people know how to do that. The only yeah. person I know that knows how to do that is my boy Supera. True. Supera came with me on the bus. So too. I just have. All, yeah, you're right. He's the only person that's like mm. that. So, like, P&B Rock do shit like that, but, like, not a lot of artists are into that. Mm-hmm. They'd rather just pay for the, the time. mixing and shit. And well, the reason was a couple, like, years ago, I, dude, I, I, no one could get the sound I wanted. So, when I got the, the DUI and got stuck, this isn't even my fucking laptop. Shout out to John, <laughs> fucking kid I met at the Crab Trap. He 
he had a laptop. He said he made music. And I was like, do you really make music, though? Like, come over. And we made an epic song that night. And he's like, you can borrow it. <laughs> and then that night, he's never taken it back. So this isn't even my laptop that I've made all my music on. It's like a sentimental thing to me now, this fucking laptop. Have you talked to John recently? Yeah, yeah. John just got fucking married and shit. He's yeah, shout, shout out John. I don't know you, bro, baby, but, but you're, you're a dope John's dude. You wouldn't be, we wouldn't guy. be here without this. Yes, that's fact. So it's, it's funny how those things happen. But that was the moment I was like, oh, shit. He's letting me hold his life. People will just let you hold their laptop, bro. Like, people don't just let you borrow their fucking MacBook. That you meant at work. Yeah, that I meant <laughs> not too long before that. But that's how good the song was. The song was goddamn. You still, you haven't released but it? But it was like, yeah, I released it. But the mixing was trash compared to now. Yeah, well, yeah. So, like, well, so you, I you really, develop over so time. So, talking about the engineers finding the sound, like, I really had to find my sound. And I, like, Frankensteined everything that I learned from other engineers. And But I looked up engineers that had the sound that I want. You know, you can't just look up the standard and this is that because everyone's voice is different. It's obvious they sit in different EQ pockets, you know what I mean? Balancing and all that shit. And I remember the song I found my sound. It was talked down with Fizzy Hendrix. When I when I I'm talking the mixing sound. When I made made that song with him and I was in the house of booze and I just one night I just tweaked that shit and the knob turned the right way, bro. <laughs> and it was copy pasted and then I experimented from the paste, you know what I mean? And that's how I found the, the real core mixing sound that I do use for vocals and shit. And in mixing vocals, I learned, like, I'm, I drum in a band, too. So yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I we, know that you do your band We work. mixed and recorded that whole album, too. So I learned a lot through that and just recording out of a lot of inputs, which is like this. This is recording multiple inputs at once and doing live takes. So that does take a lot of shit, but it was interesting to me. And just like this shit, like, I've always wanted to do this shit. You know what I mean? So it's just a natural thing for me. Well, this is my next step with this, with my whole Dirties and Jersey thing is I'm doing the Dirties and Jersey podcast. I'm going to mm-hmm. do that next. Facts. So I'm going to have all, I'm going to try at least have most yeah, of the artists. Yeah, you mentioned you want to do something similar. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah That's fine. Yeah. No, we but, need, no, um, we, need it. It. we need it. It's inspiration for you, bro, 100%. That's like, love. Yeah, but no. we need that. We need more yeah, of it. Like yeah, that's that. what, what I've saying. noticed o- over everything that I have done. Like, it's cool that it's all gone on my YouTube and shit, but what I haven't done is cross-platform. Like... No one in Jersey really has another fucking thing like that I'm doing. No one else obviously started. People have tried to do ciphers, but that's besides. That's a respect thing, actually. Like a lot of people have hit I've me seen, up. Like, I've seen one person do a cipher recently. They're from North Jersey, though. Mm-hmm. They blew up. North off. Jersey's different, though. Well, it's well, so. Well, di- well but see, that's I, the well, thing. I'm though. so I stupid. Feel like North when, Jersey compats with us. No, like, it's, it should. Like, like, but like a P, the yeah. whole plan of my ciphers was to do the whole state. But when I called it, when I named it, when I did, I called it South Jersey ciphers. I should have just called it New Jersey Ciphers because I plan on going to North Jersey. The farthest I went was Trenton. And that shit got mad views. But this is years ago. And like you can see the growth of these artists and shit. So, but what I'm saying is obviously you don't want to have other people trying to do Ciphers. But there was one battle league that kind of started up, you know, but that battle leagues are weird. I didn't want to do battles because I didn't want people yelling at each other. But no one else is really throwing shows either. You got to think about this. There's like, you know the three groups of people that are throwing shows. And ever since I stopped, you see which ones popped up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is a copy-paste formula, but the recipe, you know, it's, it's obviously the vibe. It's the energy. It's the person you are. Yeah. You got 2,000 plays not because you were a new rapper, they got bands. You got 2,000 plays because you were day. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, 100%. That's 100%. On the, from the jump because of the respect of people who you were yeah. or whatever. It didn't matter if it sounded good or not to them. They were just like, all right, I'm going to give it a chance. You know what yeah. I mean? No, and, and now I'm in the position I am in today. And, you know, if it wouldn't be and you're for thinking, people. And you're thinking outside the yeah. box. That's the yeah. whole point. Just like a musician doing a different genre, you're now like, I don't want to just fucking rap in the studio. You know what I mean? I want to talk about the shit that we do. I want to document it, you know, that's important. Like, I think these conversations, years down the line, whatever they mean to me or the person that's on it, or other people, it's going to mean something. Yeah, 100%. I would fucking kill to have a podcast on document with Cash or Jimmy or Nick, you know what I mean, or any of them. Like, I would murder to fucking have that. But then, yeah, think about your mortality, like... When you go, what are people yeah. going to have of you? Yeah. Well, motherfuckers, you got hours and hours of shit <laughs> that you could have fucked with. But, yeah, that's the thing. There's, like, a legacy you want to leave behind yeah, with this no, shit. Yeah, no, 100%, especially when you see, like, like you was talking about with your, with your fallen ones. I have fallen ones that I wish that left a, a bigger legacy than they did. Mm-hmm. You feel me? 
like they, that they could have. Yeah, exactly. Like you see that their potential, mm-hmm. and now you want to strive with their potential. Like my homie X, he died back in 2018. Mm-hmm. He was a huge rap influence with me. You know, mm-hmm. he was real into like the lyrical shit, into like the heavy, deep hip hop shit. Yeah. He was into. He was really into it. And he was doing what you do. He was doing the mixing at home. He bought his own mic. He was doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we we never really made a track, but he was always a homie. He always showed me what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And I wish that I would have done it Retained then. Retained it more. Yeah. yeah, and I wish I would have started then and not later mm-hmm. when he was passed. Feel yeah. me? That's what's weird, man. That's That's what I was saying about earlier when we were talking in the kitchen. Like, that realization of that, the, the time... The moments, like, you understand that, okay, I'm living in these moments and whatever people have done dirty to you or whatever and grudges that you're holding, you come to this thing like, okay, I still just need to live and enjoy every moment. 100%. But that doesn't mean you need to do it with those people who screwed you over initially to get some, like, reciprocation on that energy. Like, that's that's dead and gone. The letting go is what's hard. The letting go that the fact that they're gone, you know, I can't. So their energy is with me every song mm-hmm. that I make and shit like that. One hundred percent. Weird. One hundred percent. And people like me and you, we're loyalists. We have a moral ground that we won't go under for a price tag. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. One hundred percent. So that's a very different level, especially as a creator and doing shit. That's why it's going to be sentimental. The things that you do. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see what y'all do with the with the interviews and shit. Oh yeah, yeah. That's gonna be my ne- that's gonna be my next move. I want to do the ciphers like you said. Mm-hmm. I want to do the dirtiest and jersey cipher. Try and get because like like you yeah, seen like, at the end, like I'm the, bringing I'm bringing those ciphers back too, which are a completely different like form and layout. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just it's only gonna open everything else. Exactly. Like I need you like to do other shit. I need yeah. I need y'all to do more shit so that I'm not doing it all. <laughs> like like I'm not talking shit. I'm actually like, come on, dude. Like we can actually do all this alone. None of my shows I had a head. I had a headliner one show, and he didn't bring anybody to the show. What All of it? my shows, I'm not gonna put. I'm not gonna put his name out there like that. But yeah. <laughs> like I, but I had a headliner in his city. You know what I mean? And I thought people were gonna pop out for him, and no one did. And he has millions of followers online. This is like when I got my step in the industry, and I realized. All of its cap, you know what I mean? Most of it, you know what I mean? Because I'm selling out shows with local acts, not giving out prize money. But that's because I gave every artist the opportunity to make their own money with tickets. I only I didn't ask people for money. I asked them, you know how they you pay like one fifty for this amount of tickets and shit like that. I didn't do that. I was like, promise that you'll sell tickets so you can make money, because then I'll make money. You know what I mean? That's how it happened. So this my shows sold out. Because artists wanted to actually have people come have a good time. And it wasn't no, the people leave after that first artist that they came with. You know, people stayed the whole time. So when I learned that, like, I can do this without a headliner and all this shit, that means you guys can. That means we can. Yeah, 100%. That we can do this shit alone. I didn't sell out my show, but you And start our own fucking channels and YouTube, or not YouTube, fucking, I'm talking about like legit radio stations, whatever the fuck it is. It does. We can all do this shit one by one individually. But yeah, but you have to. But everybody got to take a step as a team, so mm-hmm. everybody moves as a unit. Instead well, of yeah, it, piece, pieces by pieces. You know what yeah, I mean. But at the end of the day, there's a you're the guy doing it. You know, we yeah. need we need more of this. You know, yeah. we need more people to just fucking grab a fishing rod and throw it in the fucking water. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, do more shit. Yeah, well, even if it doesn't go up right away, that's why I try mm-hmm. to tell people like thing. It's not about the. It's about the time and the effort that you put into it. Yeah, like people will put out a song and it won't get the feedback that they want, mm-hmm. and they'll think, "All right, well maybe I'll put out one more. Maybe that one will get it." And then mm-hmm. when they don't get it, they just like stop yeah. for a minute. Yeah, because they get discouraged and they're doing that means they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. When you create for yourself and trying to learn and build up, that's where the good shit comes from anyway. So you got to take your time. Like like, like you said, like you don't go, you don't make music all the time, but you do make music pretty mm -hmm. frequently. Yeah, I'm the same way. It just comes out. That's what I mean. I don't even make it. It like it makes it. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, no, that's exactly how I feel. Like when I feel like I need to go to the studio, Mm -hmm. I'll book a session and that's when I'll go. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm not going to think about, all right, I'm going to go to the studio yeah, you this gotta day. Go, yeah you gotta right. go prepared too as far as that goes like the vibe like because but that's different i've never just paid for studio time to vibe yeah. in i'm always vibing this in yeah. the studio regardless whether it's in my bedroom or at an actual studio the sessions yeah. are always the same you know what yeah. i mean as far as like the energy goes yeah but no, creating sure. is the funnest part the, well, yeah because i used like, to make shit in my bedroom myself like before i really got into going to the studio recently because mm-hmm. i feel like 
you know, I was also trying to mix it myself. I wasn't the best mixer. I only had like a copy and paste format. It's just our generation, bro. Like we gotta, we can do everything ourselves. You can look up online how to do anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we can control this shit. It's just about actually doing it and finding like your niche. Because like I said, the way I mix is not correct at all. But the way that I manipulated each plugin to counteract and work with each other, I get the fucking sound that I get. Because as far as like there's standards, you know. But I always think I'm thinking of I'm an improv artist, so like not freestyling per se, but as a drummer, I don't like playing constructed songs. I just want to play, and I want the guitarist to just play what he's thinking. I don't want anybody to like let's do C D. G, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the point of that is just because I need that open space of just diving into yeah, the, no, the fact that anything can happen. Yeah, that's a, that's how it is for me. Like like a lot of my friends, they like to, you know, a lot of the people I work with, they like to write their their music before they go into the studio where mm-hmm. I'm more of all I right. Vibe in yeah, it. when yeah. I when I go into the studio, I catch the vibe, and when I feel the vibe, and I feel like I can ride, mm-hmm. I try to ride the beat. It's always about how you come on mm-hmm. the sound of the beat. That's how my songs. That, that's are. how I free. That's actually how I write, though. Like I'll, well, yeah, well, I'll, I'll get like four freestyle yeah. in my head, and mm-hmm. I'll just put words in the syllable spaces. Yeah. You know? So if I'm like, then it, then it, then it, then I'll just say words syllably. Right. That yeah. match in that shit, yeah. dude. It's fun. See, it's fun seeing and how other people create because we all create kind of the same, but there's something. One, there's always one thing that we all yeah. do completely different. Yeah. Like my one boy needs incense. I, I I don't fuck with incense. I'm a candle guy. Incense or candles? Yeah, yeah. I know. Which one I, do you take? Incense or candles? Bro, if I'm being real, my incense, my ganja, bro. Facts. I ain't gonna lie. You don't need it. Yeah, see, yeah. That's, a, that's a good replay. That's how I used to be like, yeah, oh, yeah. shit, fucking like, candle. Like, yeah, like, like I smell like probably Dior and fucking good OG. <laughs> that's facts. That's my cologne with my cologne, you feel me? Do you like dabs? Yeah, dabs are dope. I mean, I... I don't take a lot of dabs because them shits gonna be way too hot. Facts. Like, I'll be, like, retarded and then we'll I can't do, do nothing. We'll do a big dab. We'll do a big dab. Yeah, then, yeah, then I'll be, like... <laughs> Facts. So what do you have coming up besides the um, the the podcast and shit? You have a show. Okay. You have a show coming up, right? Yeah, this I'm is about, actually I'm, probably going to be released after that. After that show, what after the show? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm about to have the show October 16th is one we're trying to book it for. Mm-hmm. Got to book it sometime soon. Um, it's going to be back in Violin Juice Box Studios. Back at the spot. Yeah, that that it's pretty. It's a pretty good spot. We're going to try upgrade on security. You feel me? So Facts. shit doesn't go anywhere. Uh, yeah. And we're gonna. It's gonna be like a Halloween theme type party mm-hmm. type joint. We just trying to do like a party, like that's what, like, And then we got. Live, and then we got the thing October thirtieth too, which is yeah. gonna just be a house party. Yeah, and we're that's gonna, gonna be fun. Yeah, dude. we're gonna be turned up. That's gonna be fun. I'll go over the details with you after after this, John. Yeah, that's but, gonna um, be insane. I'm excited. So, um, I ask this to every person, and I gotta figure it out. Mm. Hold on. Where is it? What do I get? Hmm. Yep, this is it. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? If you had to fight to the death, could you do it with this? With that? The little dab thingy. The little dab thing. <laughs> the cat. Uh, uh. Okay, this is what I would do. How would you do it? I would hold this in my hand so it, it's a harder Oh, you punch. can only use that. Only this? Yeah, and your opponent only has that too. Oh. But you have to kill with that. So you got someone coming at you with that. So like he's just trying to stab However, me However, he has his method. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably go for the eyes first. Good, I'd good, like, good. I'd probably like hold it like this. Oh, hit him with a... Like well, a slap like right to the zingers, eye. Uh, right, exactly. Right to the eyeball. And then he's going to be like this. And mm-hmm. then I would probably like try and shove it just shove into it. his mouth. Fact. Shove make him choke on it. Dude. Yeah, and choke Dude, and he's the him. first person who did step by step how I would do it. Everybody has to... It's got to go for the eye first, bro. Right. You no, nah, because you have the... Because they need to be like... Yeah. Like what's Especially going on. Especially with an object like this. Yeah, because you know it's going to hit you right here. Like even if you like swoop around him, hit him from behind and some shit. Any way to do it. All right, that's how he would survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely think I definitely think I have whoever trying to attack me on the ass. <laughs> Let's go. That's fire. 
Fuck it's it just out. like shoving it down them. Like, nope, <laughs> not dying. No, nope. he's like, fucking he's, his, there, he's holding dude. his eye. And he's like, <sighs> yeah, anywhere. Just get it the fuck. Yeah, no, there. that'd be fucked. That's great. <laughs> that'd be super fucked though. But uh, we'll be right back, yo. We're gonna hit you with the vibe of the day in this bitch. I know you don't understand. Why the fuck they love me? Calling me, they got bands. They got bands. Bitch, I got my harness. I never needed a friend. No friend. Riding in the wagon, might swap it up for the bands. I'ma stop these hundreds until I start touching M's I've been getting to it, what do you not comprehend? But you shoot a shot without looking right at the lens Feel like a mic, bitch, I'm balling above the rim Here, that was that, this is this So, um, yeah, dude, how long has your album been out? Um, what's today? The... The 19th so yeah it dropped yesterday um oh shit it dropped yesterday yeah yeah <laughs> oh, shit. I, I thought today I was listened Sunday. to it but i didn't know i thought i listened to it two nights ago i thought maybe it was last night i listened to it oh no it's sunday yeah no yeah no no, no yeah so it dropped at midnight yeah so on was, friday yeah, night where so that's friday night so yeah so september 18th it's my where? brother's birthday where? Into my brother's birthday um okay. Yeah, you did it all at uh, Detox Studios. Yeah, and the only I only have one song that's mixed by Supera. It's called Talking. I mix. I made that about probably about like over a year and a half ago now, maybe two years ago, mm. close to that. Um, it sounded good. The mix sounded great. Yeah, yeah, that was Supera. That was Supera's John. Um, yeah, then we made Talking Part Two. That that was at Detox. That's one of our. Uh, heavy hitter songs. A lot of people like that one. Yeah, I like, I like that. What the fuck is you talking about? Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that yeah. one's fire. That shit's yeah. epic. Yeah. A lot of people like that one at the show. Uh, Comprehend's a real big one. We dropped a video for that. Shout out Nick Pensa. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that one went crazy at the show. I don't think you were there for that. What time What time did y'all get there? Y'all, y'all didn't see my opening performance, did you? I was there late. Yeah, so you, you missed the I opening. Saw it. Or not? Well, wait. Were you? Did you come with Hendo, or you come after? I don't know. I was on the low. Remember? Yeah, I don't remember. I was there though. Yeah. <laughs> remember though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I was there, but I was in the cut. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I couldn't remember. But yeah, that that shit was crazy. Like it was like, lit. Yeah, that shit was. crazy. I saw that whole shit. Yeah, that shit was nuts. Stomping on the stage and shit. Hell yeah. Did you make that stage? Yeah, we we hand built that That's shit. That's so awesome. Yeah, we got like some crates. <laughs> yeah, just, and just li- Yeah, literally we just got like spray painted the John and Yeah, we got plywood spray painted that shit on there. Shout out my boy uh Joe. Runs Trip to Glory, he's got some merch. Where Which, you can definitely go tap in with him. He got custom made shit. That's what we're doing at uh the Righteous Blasphemy show, the, the next house party, October 30th. Yeah. That's what we do. We have a tiny little stage built like this just so we can stomp on it. It's fucking yeah. great. There's a fucking half pipe in the backyard, dude. Yeah. It's so going to be <laughs> if it's you know any movie. skaters and shit, tell them to come out. Fucking. So where's um, it at? It's in Paulsboro? Yeah. Paulsboro, New Jersey. Private location. Private. Word. But, um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to throw my first show around November. Or December, like my first show at an actual venue. What would that be? Yeah, you think the IAO recording probably at the IAO spot. Where's I forget what town that is. I forget. It's all around that area though, like Woodbury area. It's like an hour away. Yeah, that's where Scythe be at, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's like the area around that. Yeah, everything's an hour from here. It's it's weird. We're in a weird pocket. Hamilton's an hour from here. How long did it take you to get here? Like 30... Uh, I live in Egg Harbor City. Oh, word. So, yeah, that's a half hour. Yeah, it's like 35. Word. So how long How long did it take you to finish the album? Did you guys like... Did you have um, it song by song or... Yeah, we went in... We, so literally what I did was... Talking, I wanted to be on my album because I dropped it on... So last year I had a little mixtape I dropped. It was called the pre-goat tape. I was supposed to drop the actual goat tape mm-hmm. and I never got around to it because a bunch of shit happened. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I wanted to have talking though. Talking was like the most popping song out of the whole goat tape. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to put that on the album and then we made talking part two. So that shit went perfectly. Right. Um, yeah, so it probably took us about I want to say three to four months to fully finish everything. Where so it was built around the talking vibe. Yeah, originally, Word. yeah, originally that was, and then I made bang. The bang was the first song that I ever recorded in detox. Hmm. 
and I had that pre-written almost. I literally recorded like I think I wrote the chorus and I just doubled it, and then I might have wrote like four bars of the first verse, hmm. and then and I then just five, yeah, just went in from there. That's fun. I have some records I freestyle on. Usually, I uh, like I said, I'll, I'll like mumble out it, but then I'll free, I'll write the words in. But well, I've been doing that recently. That mumbling shit, mm-hmm. like the is shit, works a lot easier. And then just punch it, and then just writing your thoughts on top of it. Right. That's the thing about making every genre, because I'm not in the mood to. Sometimes I don't feel like talking about some of the shit that that shit impales. comes with. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. That it comes with exactly. Yeah. You know, one hundred percent. I agree. Yeah, we be having all different types of vibes, me and Demi. I mean, Demi's like my, mm-hmm. my go-to partner when it comes to the music shit. Like, he's, you know, I've known Demi for 15 years. I'm, if not, you, if you I'm could 19, play... so I met him at like four years old. Oh, shit. Right. If you could play any instrument, what would it be? Mm, probably the saxophone. Dude, me too. I used to play it as a kid, but that shit is expensive. Right. To that keep shit. up with it, clean in it. It's yeah, like no. different than strings and shit. Yeah, strings shit. are annoying to keep up with, too. That shit's... I love jazz. Yeah, jazz is gnarly. Like, especially people that sample jazz. Mm-hmm. I can't listen to the jazz that's like so fucking out there that it's like, yeah, it's like complete. Everyone's just playing different things. <laughs> like, it's like, you got five people playing different five different songs. <laughs> yeah, no, that shit. That shit gets like insane. That's yeah. like at churches and shit. Yeah, but people but don't jazz. Know what, but jazz, other than that, like that smooth jazz and shit, or like no, yeah, anything no. else. Yeah, all that shit's great. Anything that's vibey. That's dope. Yeah, yeah saxophones. Shout, shout Louis Armstrong. Facts. <laughs> fucking saxophones on smooth jazz is such a fucking vibe, dude. Yeah, I play drums. I play a little bit of keys, but that's mostly like synth solos and shit. I love doing just those solo roll downs. Do you ever play Guitar Hero and shit? As a kid, I did. Yeah, I wasn't the greatest though. <laughs> like my brother, my, my brother's my brother's guitar player. My brother's real into all that. Did shit. he my play Guitar Hero though? Huh? Did he play Guitar Hero though? Yeah. For sure. My brother's probably... Because that's weird. It doesn't transition. My brother's closer to your age. He's like 33 now. Weird. So that's weird. Like, I don't I don't see how that could transition into actual guitar. But Rock Band with the drums did. Oh, yeah. When I was playing the fucking drums. Rock Band drums and then Guitar Hero copied off of Rock Band and brought them drums out. And I was a fucking drummer in a week, dude. <laughs> Drumming is easy, dude. It's like... It's like yeah, I used ride, to drum as a kid. It's like riding a bike. Oh, yeah. It's like if you can do th- like dance or anything or walk, you can it's just rhythm. Yeah, it's the same thing with rapping. It's rhythm. Just say words with a rhythm and try to rhyme them. Yep. And if you can't figure out rhyming words, go on rhymezone dot com. <laughs> There's so many things like that now. Right. Like they have, or or simply just look up rhyming words for. I remember. I remember my mama got me a book like years and years ago and it wasn't it was like you know how they have the dictionary and shit or like the thesaurus what was it the it rap was a, dictionary it was like a book with all the words that rhyme with certain like different words and shit and i never used it i should probably pull it out that would be insane. but but yeah so if you say like break it just has pages of a list of words that rhyme with break ache take shake you know what i mean right. shit like that that's pretty gnarly Apparently fucking Eminem used to just read the dictionary and shit. I know a lot of rappers who used to do that, just read the dictionary. But if you use words that people don't know, then then they're fucked. Well, Because it's like considered corny. <laughs> if you say just say a word that like common people don't use a lot. Yeah, sadly it's considered corny, even though it's more yeah. intelligent. Yeah, why do we beat up people that are smart? Like, as kids, like, they bully kids for being smart in school. It's yeah, I never up. understood that. It's weird, dude. It's a... Because that's the physical thing versus the mental thing. That's weird. Yeah, school school was never for me. Everything I meet you there, dude. I said this on the other podcast. I just... I honestly didn't mind the fucking social aspect and shit, but just waking up early every day. Because ca- we had to catch a bus and shit, so I had to be up at like 5.45, bro. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I had to be up at 6.30 out of my way, but like... Fuck that. Like, what? I don't got a job. Right? Like, like, I, I'm like 10. Going in there like... Uh, it's just because they're setting us up for like a system of... No, that's exactly what it is. Same thing with the bells. Mm-hmm. All that. All that. It's fucking crazy. It's just like a, like a prison system. Well, I've thought about like a society, like obviously like the utopia society where everyone can just do what they want every day. And it probably, it would probably crumble pretty quick. 
<laughs> like if there wasn't some sort of system in place. But if you think about a world where everybody just, everyone had what they wanted, right? Like this psychological thing. Like say I have my mansion, right? Like acres of land. But then I see my neighbor with a trampoline. And I don't have a trampoline, right? And I want a trampoline. The difference in the thought process is that like, okay, well I can just go get my my own trampoline. And then the other one is like, I want to take his trampoline. Like that's the that's the only psychological breakdown of like the greed, because in this reality you can have whatever you want. Yeah. So what if you see like oh I want I want his girlfriend or like I want that dog or like you can literally copy it and take it or get your own version of it. But the thing is they want that one, you know. So there's a weird thing with human greed and jealousy that like when when I do this did this mental exercise about a world of people having everything they actually wanted. We're still going to want more is basically what it boils down to. Oh, yeah. Because everything that I've done, I'm like, what now? I've achieved a lot of the things I wanted to do. And the second that I do them, I like can't even enjoy it because I'm just hit with this thought of, fuck, what do I do now? You know, that's why you got to have like 30 different things you want to do, man. You got to. That's why I'm happy that you're going to open up and do those other avenues of this thing, which is the same thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're just giving an outlet or an avenue to express the music and have people tell their stories and shit. Yeah, everybody got their own story, and people don't mm -hmm. understand that nowadays. I feel like people just, like, expect. Yeah, and they talk... It's like people watch are a so movie. High. Yeah, they watch a movie, and they agree on the movie, and then they think they understand that person's life. Yeah. Like, you because, don't know what the fuck that person right. is going through right now, let alone what they've been through, things like that. Yeah, so like, life's a crazy fucking thing, so... Yeah, like, that's why I was out and I was very aware of it. Like, that's why I was super open to people. Like, I'm still open to everybody, but a couple years ago, when I was doing all the connecting, like I said, I hadn't ever really dealt with loss as far as mourning and shit. So I had the energy to share with people, you know? I had excess of understanding of how to have fun, you know what I mean? And then when I understand the reality of death and shit... Like, okay, I need some of this energy for me now. You know what I mean? So that's really the realization of taking a step back and and understanding what this fucking thing is. And it's all about if you like I wanna live forever. <laughs> I don't wanna Thanks. I wanna see what happens in thousands of years. But the only way that like I can like more like re realistically live forever is like if I leave such a statement behind whether it's music, whether it's a conversation, that it's embedded in somebody and that my energy is reproduced. Just like my homies who passed away, when I write, mm -hmm. I always think of them and their energy is like in all my songs. So in a way, they never died. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? That's kind of how I look at this. But then I think like, is internet even going to be a thing in 50 years? Like what, are, what is the internet even going to be? And if that's what I'm thinking, that's how my legacy is going to hold up on YouTube. Like, the YouTube could just shut me down if we, if we say something in this podcast that they don't like. You know what I mean? So I started thinking, like, is my leg what, what legacy am I really trying to leave behind? Is it even going to stay? It's not guaranteed. So I realized, yo, we need to get statues made of us. <laughs> the only things that last the test of time, like thousands of years, are statues and shit. <laughs> so the bugs and they got bands statue. statue marble you know like some hidden passageway under it or some shit you bro, know I mean? bro, i'd probably be in a bay hoodie, <laughs> a bay with, hoodie. yeah that would probably be that yeah with my long hair dripping out <laughs> uh probably some true religion jeans and Facts. some air force ones <laughs> Air Force ones. Uh, yeah, and maybe black like or a, white, black or white, but definitely the white, definitely the white. <laughs> definitely white. Yeah, with like Dude, a white. I love that woke king a Louis said belt. that. With a Louis belt. I love that woke king said that in his song. Uh, ain't no black Air Force. I'm about belt with some red shoes. <laughs> right. Yeah, shout out woke king. Bro. Yeah, I was like, yo, that's just yo, hilarious. Yo, October, October 16th is gonna be a movie. Shout out woke king and the hendo. Yeah, shout out radar. Demi. Shout out bug. Shout out juice Thanks. box. Violent New Jersey. You ain't there. Yeah, I'll be there. You've you see, you seen what happened at the first one. So. I mean, if this comes out, like, I know that this is going to come out after that probably because, like, I have set up every week that I already set, like, the next five weeks, six weeks. So if this comes out after, which I'm pretty sure it will, I'll put clips of it right here. Like, I'll just yeah. put clips of it. So, like, yeah. 
So y'all see what's good. Yeah, that. Yeah. Fucking yeah. so dope. Did you need the any more like more room for that? Is that good? Are you rapping? You did a double rap? Yeah, I usually do the double rap. This is cool though. Back. Well, yo, I want to get this Eagles game in. I gotta play some fucking live bets. It's still zero zero, and I gotta make some fucking money. But this is they got bands, bro. You're gonna see him a lot more. Like I said, he's about to do his own things. He's about to do his own version of Cyphers, his own podcast, he's throwing shows. We need a lot more of that, y'all. If y'all feel like you can do it, I mean, you know how to throw a house party, right? Just fucking do it, yo. Right. Everybody start All you gotta throwing do is shit. Buy a mic or a, a it, fucking like, or a or fucking. hire buggy to run the sound, and I'll curate the vibes. You know right. what I mean? I'm, I'm on deck, you know, but. More people need to start doing their own thing 100%. so that we can cross platforms. And then who knows who's going to pop, bro? Like, I posted a fucking video talking about the algorithm. I posted a video just called Art Period and me screaming at the top of my lungs. That shit got more views than a lot of the recent fucking podcasts I dropped. And it just says Art and it's me screaming. That's it. I'll show you it. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, my but, God. But who knows what's going to pop is what I'm saying, especially with how these oh. algorithms are set up. Everybody just start doing your thing, bro. I salute you for doing shit, dog. Thank you, homie. Yes, I appreciate sir. you having me. If y'all don't know, I met Bugs in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been about, what, three years now? Yeah, so. I haven't seen you since then. Right, yeah. right, until recently. So, yeah, I mean, it's, been, it's, it's came along. With, we've been, we, I've been through quite the road since then. You know, mm-hmm. now, now I same. go to the studio. Same with yourself. Yeah, and I'm great to see you. But I'm really happy to see you. It's been a real shit thing. recognizes real shit. Oh, yeah. And that energy is just there. Yeah. Shout out Drip God for fucking yeah, putting us together. Yeah, shout out Drip. Shout out Drip. Thanks again, bro. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. See y'all.